In this video, I will show you how to install Windows 11 in just 5 steps regardless if your device is compatible or not. I will also be going through the very hyped features of Windows 11 including those that most tech pubers do not tell you. If you are new here, start now hitting that subscribe button because this channel is all about the best tips and tricks related to technology. Okay, so Windows 11 comes with its own perks, but to unlock them, your device has to be compatible, which is the downside. But that's where I come into play. Yes! My device is not compatible, but still I've been able to successfully install Windows 11 without harming my device. To do so for yourself, the first step is to open the VMware website and download the free version of it. All links are in the description. You wanna know what else is in the description? Well, there's a link to our website and more YouTube videos you need to watch. You're probably asking, hey Neo, what's VMware? In simple words, VMware is a virtual machine which allows you to download other operating systems on your device. Yes, this means if you're using a MacBook, you can still install Windows 11, but I will not be teaching that in this video as I only have a Windows PC. A virtual machine is basically like a completely new laptop inside the one you're currently using. And a special feature of those is that if anything happens to the virtual machine, your device will not be affected. The second step is to install the ISO or image file of Windows 11. But to do so, we have to join the Windows Insider program. To do so, open the website insider.windows.com, scroll down and click register. Accept the license agreement and click register now. Scroll back up and click Windows Insider. Scroll back down and click ISOs. Then scroll to the very bottom and choose Windows 11 beta version, click confirm. Choose your language which is English, click confirm and then finally click 64-bit download. Once your Windows 11 ISO and VMware installer files are installed, we have to create a virtual machine. Before that, run your VMware installation file to completely install it on your PC. The third step is to create a virtual machine. Run VMware and click create a new virtual machine. Select installer disk image file and choose the Windows 11 ISO file. Click Windows 10 x64 from the drop down menu. There's no Windows 11 option because that is still quite new. Give your virtual machine a name and leave all the other options as they are. Finally, click finish and you're ready to go. Then click on the virtual machine in the left hand side and click run. The fourth step is to follow the Windows 11 setup. You can set it up however you want. But remember, if you are asked whether you have a product key, click no. And when you are asked which Windows 11 version you want to install, choose Windows 11 Pro. The final thing to keep in mind is that if you are asked whether you want to upgrade and keep your files or custom install, Choose custom install because since you're in a virtual machine, your files are in store. Don't worry, your files will not be deleted. This has been tested by many professionals. The final and the most exciting step is to wait for it to completely get installed and you are ready to go. Two hours later. Don't leave because I am going to show you the key features you need to know so you can get the max out of Windows 11. <laughs> Why is Windows 11 becoming so popular? It's obviously because of its hyped features, but that is what we will be exposing. Are all of the features hyped or do they deserve their exaggerated popularity? Starting off with the features I like. The default desktop background is not that boring old Windows 10 logo anymore. I mean, why would it be? You can change the themes like you would do in Windows 10, but in Windows 11, when you change from dark to light or light to dark, your background also changes accordingly, giving it a neater look. The taskbar now has centered icons, which is a very awaited feature Microsoft should have added to Windows 10. For the nostalgic viewers out there, you can still change the alignment of the icon to the left. And yes, I said viewers not subscribers, because 65% of the viewers aren't subscribed to the channel, so hit that subscribe button. A new feature of the taskbar is the secret start menu, which appears when you right click on the start icon. Towards the right corner is what Microsoft calls Corner Overflow. The internet, time, etc. are now all grouped into the Corner Overflow menu. The new Notification Center has a way better UI so that you guys can click on the notification with joy when we release a new video. To know more about the taskbar and how to customize it, check out Kevin's video here. Talking about the taskbar, 
there are newer icons, including that of the Start menu. There is also a designated icon just for Search. Apps like Notepad, Control Panel, Microsoft Store, and many more have updated their icons to more catchy and attractive ones. The all-new Start menu makes it easier to pin apps. They have removed the option of resizing and live tiles, which is one of the very hyped features of Windows 10. Wait a minute, Instagram? We will get back to that later. The start menu still has that old and boring recommendations feature, but now it shows the recent files you opened, which is sort of helpful. At the bottom, you can add folder shortcuts for downloads, documents, etc. The new search icon comes with its own new feature of recent searches. When you hover over the icon, it shows your recent search requests, which is helpful and saves time. The next feature, which is one of my favorites, is the rounded corners. Seems like Windows has taken some inspiration from its competitor macOS. Not only do the apps have rounded corners, but so do most of the contextual menus. Oh, and if you're liking this review, then don't hesitate to go and check out the features of the newly launched iPhone 13. It's really fascinating. So if you want to know more about it, head over to cenefspeed.com and view my latest post in which I cover almost everything you should know before buying the iPhone 13. Coming back on track, Snap Groups has it made way easier to use. Just by hovering over the minimize or maximize icon, you can choose your layout. Microsoft has made a very smart move by making Snap Groups easily accessible. Come on, who doesn't want to simplify multitasking? And if you don't want to hover over the minimize or maximize button, you can also just drag the window to its position. One second, let me give a shout out to Swati Suresh and Muhil VK for being the first two subscribers to reply to the pinned comment on my previous video. Thank you! Others, if you also want a shout out, just be one of the first two viewers to reply to the pinned comment. Going on, the file explorer has been made more visually relaxing with newer icons and also larger spacing between files for touch users. But one sad part is the contextual menu. 7-zip users will have a hard time extracting files. When you right click, that option isn't directly available. You have to right click and then click more options. I guess we cannot have all the luxury. In contrast to the bad contextual menu, the settings app has a way better UI. On searching for a setting, the results are organized neatly and it works way faster than that of Windows 10. Oh yeah, if you're enjoying this video, a sub to the channel would be UI. I mean, utterly impressive. The dictation tool is also way better than that of Windows 10. It is still activated with the shortcut key Windows plus H, but it now has the feature of auto punctuation and can also detect whenever your cursor is in a text field and gets activated automatically. Coming back to Instagram, the enhanced Microsoft Store now has Android apps. They partnered with Amazon Play Store to make this feature possible. And one cool app in Amazon Play Store is Spellchamp, link in the description. As I told you about Instagram, it is in the start menu but to activate it, you have to download it. The new clipboard history menu also provides the option of emojis, gamojis and gifs. To activate it, you can press Windows plus V, Windows plus period or even Windows plus semicolon. The UI is also way more elegant. Phew, that was a lot of hyped features which actually make up to their popularity. But now, let's start exposing the features which I dislike and you most probably will too. The widget is a very hyped feature which doesn't deserve its hype because it does show the latest news, feed, temperature, etc. But it is nothing more than an advertisement section according to me. The worst part is that if you want to edit your interests, you have to go to msn.com which has very less features and very few customizable options. Microsoft should allow third party widgets and newsfeed. And something even worse than the advertisement section, I mean the widgets panel, is the default app settings. Just to change your default browser, you have to put in 190% more effort. So imagine how tough it would be to change the default apps by file types. Why did Microsoft even decide to change this perfectly good feature of Windows 10? And there you have it. Ultimate goal, let's see if this video can get about 100 likes. Comment down below what you think about Windows 11, like your favorite features and whether it deserves its hype or not. Share this video if you found it interesting, check out my website cnfspeed.com, reply to the pinned comment for a shout out and don't forget to subscribe. Finally, all links are in the description and I hope you enjoy it. To check out a custom built robotic mask, click here. Click here for a video on keyboard shortcuts. As always, my name is Neil, you're watching cinefspeed.com and I'll catch you in the next one.